Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this rifle that you see right here. It's the Daniel Defense M4 V7. This here with the furniture that you see is the, I believe, 2013 version. The uh, reason that is, it's, it's an older rifle. We've had it for a while now. It's been on the channel for a while. Sorry about the wind. I'm not sure if that's coming through. But uh, it's been on the channel for a while. It actually had to go back. And the reason it had to go back to the factory was uh, I went to add this Magpul K2 Plus grip on here. And when I unthreaded the screws, the screw was totally bound in the receiver, in the lower receiver. And uh, it turns out, after sending the gun back, what they reported back was the lower threading was out of spec. Uh, didn't surprise me after trying to do what I did. And um, they actually replaced it. So I think the total turnaround time was like three days. So you can't complain about that at all. Um, but that's why it's taken a while to get this on the channel here. I just wanted to put a bunch of rounds with it as it is now to make sure that the current version was good to go. The old one was good to go too. I never had a malfunction, never had any issues with it. But you know, out of spec lower with the threading is always uh, something that raises the eye. But for now, we'll keep putting some rounds down range, then step inside, take a look at this sucker. to test the accuracy of this little beast we got uh, four different rounds we're going to run through it to see what kind of performance we can get out of this chrome lined uh, cold timber forged barrel we have 62 grain lake city 556 uh, 855 here we have some hornady steel match 75 grain bolt tail hollow point stuff generally is pretty accurate here we have some wolf 55 grain uh steel case cheap stuff but which surprisingly every now and then puts out a decent group and then we have 55 grain uh, Freedom Munitions uh, remanufactured here. So uh, I guess we'll get started. We'll do the uh, Freedom first. Why not? For those of you wondering, this is the CTK Precision uh, Rest here. Really nice. I did a review of it a long time ago and uh, use it all the time. It's still holding up. We had one piece of uh, foam fall off here in the back, but as much as I use it, I'm not complaining about that. Anyway, uh, let's see what we can get here. We start punching paper. Pretty nice right there for non-match ammo. All right, what do we got next? This one here is the 55 grain steel case wolf, steel jacketed steel case. Again, pretty decent group from what I can see through the scope here. For those of you wondering, this scope here is that SWFA uh, 3x9 SS scope I reviewed before. Awesome, just workhorse. Works well on pretty much any kind of platform. That There's the uh, Lake City I just threw in there. So 62 grade 8x5, 556 chamber.
pretty good group so far. So far, I'm certainly pleased with what I'm seeing down there. I'm sure you guys are seeing it too on your camera. Hopefully. Hopefully it's working. Last up, we'll have the 75 grade Hornady, the uh, steel match ammo. Certainly respectable. Let's go check them out. Pretty respectable groups all around. Really not a bad one among them, in my opinion. Uh, we'll go around here as we shot them and actually just take a look at it. Looking at one and a quarter inches with that Freedom Munitions. Really good for practice ammo. And there we got just over an inch and a half, maybe an inch and three quarters. Just at an inch and a half again. And right at an inch and a half again with the tap. So pretty consistently uh, shooting under two inches. I'd imagine that free floated barrel um, you add a, a little bit of a trigger upgrade in there, you can get those right around one MOA, which again, all of the ammo that we were just shooting, really only one of them should be shooting that well. So by all means, cannot complain about those groups. The barrel and the bolt carrier group are probably the most important parts of your AR, and this uh, rifle certainly has top-notch examples of uh, each of those components. The barrel here is a government profile, uh, mil-spec steel. It's cold hammer forged with a 1 in 7 twist and a mid-length gas system. The barrel is chrome-lined, MP-tested, and on the outside here we have a nice phosphate coating. The flash suppressor is a Daniel Defense proprietary design, and you can see there it has multiple slots, but on the bottom there aren't any slots, so that way it'll help control recoil and not give you a big dust signature and still reduce a little bit of flash. Good all-around muscle device. On top of that 16-inch barrel, you have what Daniel Defense calls the MFR, or the Modular Float Rail. It is a 12-inch rail made of 6061 T6 aluminum. It's Type 3 hard anodized, and it's a very durable mounting system. As you can see here is several different attachment points all the way around the uh, barrel nut. And it comes with three uh, removable rail sections, so you can add them really wherever you need the rail sections, or you can just run it slick if you want to. But the uh, top rail as well is T-marked all the way down, and obviously 1913 spec, so if you want to put your any sort of accessories on there that you want to, you can, and they'll work just fine. The last piece we'll go over up front, which is kind of hard to see, but underneath that rail, you can kind of see the low-profile gas block there. It's made of a, a single piece of 4140 steel, and it's actually pinned onto the barrel, so it's not a clamp or a screw. It's probably the most secure design on there, um, so very high-quality gas block as well. Nothing too fancy going on here at the upper, but it's made of 7075 T6 aluminum. You can see in there it does have M4 feed ramps for added reliability, particularly under rapid fire. The bulk carrier here is 8620 steel. It's full auto profile as you can see. It's chrome lined and that gas key is staked in there pretty well. So there's certainly nothing to complain about there. Uh, the bolt itself is 158 carpenter steel. It's MP tested. And uh, you can see here on the extractor we have both the uh, insert as well as the O-ring on there for added uh, extraction tension and reliability. The lower is a multi-caliber mark, 7075 T6 aluminum receiver. Uh, it's pretty much mil-spec with the exception that the mag well is opened up a little bit for easier mag changes. And uh, on the current versions, you're going to have your Daniel Defense furniture with the integrated tr trigger guard. The other ones do have the mag mag pole on there. And I, again, I changed out the grip there. Trigger is standard mil-spec stuff. However, it's very crisp. Uh, it breaks right around five pounds. It's got a nice crisp pull to it. So nothing to write home about, but certainly nothing to complain about either there. The buffer there is a H marked buffer, so it's going to help uh, soften that recoil up a little bit and uh, reduce wear and tear on the rifle. <clears throat> the current rifles will come with the Daniel Defense stock, but underneath that stock will be a 7075 T6 uh, receiver extension, mil spec, and it's six position adjustable. And the end plate here does have a quick detach point for uh, adding in your QD accessories or sling. Throughout the rifle, you've seen it configured in different ways, but it does come just as I described the components here. Uh, so no sights, um, just the three rails up front. And uh, it comes with a PMAG, it also comes with a hard case. So if you wanna add all the other accessories, you need to do that um, on your own, but they're not included. So um, 
really not a whole lot to complain about with the rifle at all. Like I said, we had that one issue with the uh, lower, but the customer service was awesome. Uh, like I said, I think they had it for three days. So they kept me abreast the whole time saying, you know, hey, we got your rifle in. Hey, it's going back out. Real easy to deal with. Uh, it's a great customer service there. Nothing to complain about. The rifle is made from quality components as we just went over. And uh, really that's what makes a quality AR. Um, folks are always asking me what AR should I get? I get that question multiple times a day and uh, you know generally speaking if they don't know anything about specs or what they even want or have never you know really fired a rifle before I, I will often recommend a Colt um, in their but if their budget's under a thousand dollars I'll often recommend a Colt because they make good rifles uh, they seem to work well they have good customer service etc um, but you know it's often said that Colt makes war horses not show ponies I tend to agree with that um, but when you step up into the sort of twelve hundred to uh, two thousand dollar range you can get into the Daniel defenses and the Bravo company rifles of the world and those those companies make war horses and show ponies so I mean they're just top-notch rifles um, and great customer service great performance and great components so really not a whole lot to complain about there uh, this rifle it has the government profile barrel like we talked about but there's other b7s out there that you're gonna see which are gonna have lightweight barrels and that'll shave five ounces off the rifle so which one you go with really is up to you uh, pros and cons to each but either way, it's still going to be a good rifle, and I believe now they also have multiple color configurations out there in these rifles. So there's a lot of different options out there for you. Pick which one you guys like, take it out to the range, and shoot it a bunch, and it should run just fine for you. If you have any questions about this rifle or anything else to talk about here on the channel, you can always post below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next video.